what minis you get in the mini shop and the real button is not just luck. In fact, you can actively manipulate this system to give you the minis that you want. So here's how the best players take full advantage of this, starting from the basic little tips to a full explanation of the inner workings of the shop system. Level 1. Try not to reroll in round 1. If you have the minis that you want, perfect, play it, then press ready. Otherwise, it's often fine to just lose the round by playing nothing. That way you save free rolls for future rounds and you have info of what minis that they have whereas they don't of you. Do this especially if you're playing the monk or the skeleton king or you're facing against them because there is a good chance that they can win on their own without any other minis on the board. But this is useless if you don't understand level 2. Let's say we're dealt with this hand. I just place down the magic archer and ready up. And here is what I get next round. The two minis that I haven't placed down, the ultra and the lumberjack, they are still there. But this one has changed. So the minis will stay there if you don't touch them. Here's how you take full advantage of this system. Before you place down and upgrade the minis that you need for the current round, I want you to think ahead. Will these minis actually be useful in the next round? For example, let's say I need to upgrade Dark Goblin twice this round. So he will attack like crazy. Perfect, here's a Dark Goblin. But I don't want these useless archers. So let's reroll. I'm perfect, the other Dark Goblin. We place that down and done. That's what you shouldn't do. So let's rewind. And now let's think. I know I'm going to place the Dark Goblin, but will these two other minis be useful to me next round? I already said that Archer is useless. So what we want to do is place it on the board and sell it back by dragging it to the shop. It's like discarding the mini. But I think the Ice Wizard will be very useful. So I will use him next round and I'm going to keep him in this shop. And now I can upgrade the Dark Goblin after considering all the other minis here. So next round, we see the Ice Wizard again, but not the Archer. If you're even a bit confused, I recommend you watch level 2 again. Because level 3, oh, it's spicy. What I'm about to explain, it's so complicated and intricate that only a couple hundred people know about this. Because almost nobody tried to explain this to the average Clash Mini player, so it ended up being gatekept by the best players. So today, let's break that gate. Level 3! So here's how the system works. We're gonna get four copies of each mini, each representing each of the three mini stars plus the base ability. And now we're actually gonna mix these all together so you get 20 minis randomly in this pool if all your minis are maxed. So what the reroll system does is that it randomly selects three minis from the pool onto your shop. And if you use the mini on the board, you will never see the copy again because it's not leaving the board now, right? But if we reroll or we place and sell the mini, let's say we reroll, these minis will go to the reuse pile and new random minis from these decreasing pool will come to replace it. No, these are definitely not Uno cards. And this will happen over and over until there are no minis in this pool. And then the minis in the reuse pile will move to the pool again and it'll be shuffled and then the cycle starts again. Okay, I know it's a mouthful, but what does this practically mean? First, placing and selling a mini before you reroll does nothing because they both achieve the same thing, which is to move a mini to the reuse pile. You see how all three minis in my shop are in here, despite being discarded in different ways, right? So if you're doing that, you are just wasting your time. Second, if all your minis are maxed out, you should see all your minis copied by round three because each round you can cycle through nine out of the 20 minis in the pool by discarding all your minis before round one and two starts. So you should be able to free start anything by round three without even needing to reroll in round three. Cause by then, all the minis will be gone from the original pool. So there's no excuse of not getting your minis you want by round 3. And you can cycle through 18 out of the 20 minis by round 2 as well. So it's pretty unlikely that you don't get what you want there as well if you can fully utilize this reroll system. Third, you need to pay attention to your cycle. Let's say you see 3 Pekkas right away in round 1. You are not going to see them again until round 3 because they're going to be in this pool, right? And you only have one more P.E.K.K.A. in the pool. So instead of re-rolling to find a 2 elixir mini to use all your 6 elixir, it would be smart to just place a P.E.K.K.A. down and ready up. So next round, the 2 P.E.K.K.A.s will be still there for you to upgrade. 
to take this a step further, you can try to keep track on where you are in the cycle, whether you just started a cycle, right in the middle, or at the very end. And you can keep track of how many copies of each mini appeared in the cycle, so you know what remaining minis to expect later in the cycle so you can prepare your strategies. But even after learning the system, you still gotta make sure not to waste all your rerolls before you reach the later rounds, because those rerolls are essential for building up your push and your long-term stability in terms of what you have. So if you just waste all of them in rounds 1 and 2, you are in a very risky situation even if you know all the ins and outs of the reroll system. So unless the upgrade you need is absolutely essential, don't use all your rerolls by round 2. This even took me very long to actually grasp. Yes, this is information overload, so watch this video again. And if you think you really understand, here's 14 little tricks that only Clash Mini Pros do.